All right. So today we're going to be taking a look at Shattered Heaven. Uh, and if you're watching this as soon as I put it out, then there's still time for you to back this on Kickstarter. I've actually played the game a little bit already, so I'm going to be continuing. The first thing that I'm going to show you is going to be the sort of uh, control hub that you're going to, to uh, get to very quickly after basically just the tutorial mission. Now, it won't be entirely open for you right away, but it opens up pretty quick. I don't know if it'll be like that at release because this is a very early build, um, but uh, very impressive so far. Oh, actually, looks like we're already in a dungeon. Wonderful. Okay, so I'll show you the <laughs> hub at the end of this video. A uh, little cliffhanger there. I'm already in a dungeon. So we're going to be playing, basically, um, this game is, to me, feels like an East meets West. You've got elements of, you know, a, a lot of roguelikes. Um, Iron Oath that uh, I played recently has a very similar uh, kind of system as far as the dungeon crawling is concerned. The gameplay is a little bit like a party-based Slay the Spire, as we're going to see. And the art style is really where the East meets West. I get this, the vibes of a, sort of a fire emblem. Has a little bit of an anime touch, but but really cool sort of tarot and, and semi-religious artwork um, that is much more Western. Um, so it's just very interesting and unique. So with most of these kinds of uh, dungeon nodes, uh, there are these events that occur at a node. There, I just evaded a trap, so that's good. You can use these, uh, so you can see down here I have a little inventory, and you can use these trap disarming kits in order to disarm the trap. Uh, <laughs> there's a little typo there, disarming the trap. There's actually a, a warning here that there's going to be some typos. The uh, developers, I believe, are from Italy, um, so the English is actually quite good. Uh, there's just a few typos, you know, there's typos in, in uh, every game that I've ever played, really. So we're exploring right now. Uh, as you see, there's not really any sort of economy of movement. There's just sort of the risk and reward of actually attempting um, to get by. So here I have three options. So there's a sign of the betrayer, blasphemous, and I can use one of these items to attempt to protect myself from the blasphemy, 50% success. Let's try it. Nothing happens. Okay, so I'm not sure if that meant that it was good or bad. I think that was good. Um, it could have been like a curse. Uh, so now I have this branching option. I can go off to the right or I can go ahead. Let's go ahead here. And we run into, oh, we still had another tutorial left to do. While exploring, you may stumble upon Kairos, an ambitious merchant. He can greatly aid you in the in your quest for the right price. So uh, I have this currency as bones uh, and I can heal my wounds. I can remove a card from a deck and I can also buy a tool. So I'm not hurt at all. I might pay just five bones to remove a card from my deck. And now I choose whom I'm going to remove it from. Uh, let's just choose Endora. And we will remove, uh, let's just remove press the attack. This is sort of the most basic attack card. It's not bad, but uh, you know I have more specialized cards. So here I can make an offering or walk away. Let's make an offering. Ah, uh, okay, so this is the camp. So at the camp, I have uh, these action points up here, uh, which are represented by these pips, and I can do a number of things. Smelting is basically just what I was doing there. I can remove a card from a deck and so that just lets me sort of um, optimize my chances of getting the specific cards that I've added to the deck. You can only do it a number of times, so we're going to do that a few times and, and uh, until we can't anymore. And that's it. We're out of uh, all of our action points. The other things I could do would be to sort of heal, uh, draft new cards. And so now we'll go ahead and rest. Would have been better to use that once I was hurt. Oh, here I'm getting a little bit of story. So the story is presented in this fashion, very classic R R RPG um, standard sort of fare where you have the um, story being told to you here in text and the characters come in, they have a little bit of animation, they have a few expressions. Um, they'll sometimes have a couple of, uh, you know, those sort of generic voice lines where they're like, huh, what? You know, that sort of thing. Um, and then they tell you the story down here. Um, 
So really, the story is more of an inter-character relationship and exposing like what the condition of the world is, which seems to be sort of like this way apocalyptic fantasy kind of world where they've the, the gods are dead and uh, you know you're not sure if we're in limbo or what's going on here. One thing that I, I noticed that I really love about uh, the backgrounds here is if you look closely, um, and it might not come through if you're watching this video on like a small screen, but the flowers back here, they look like vaguely like skulls, taste tastefully like skulls. So there's also, yeah, there's also the option to skip there if you're the sort of person that just likes to get straight into the action. And there's this nice little, um, just kind of a, uh, a gu not a guide really, I mean there's the tutorials are here, but it's it's kind of like just a quest log uh, of all of the things that I've learned, um, all of the people that I've met. So there's a lot of story, a lot of content already, uh, even though this is just the um, alpha of the first chapter. Um, so it seems like there's going to be a very deep uh, sort of mythos behind it. The characters are very rich. This is definitely not the moment for useless girl talk. Aww. <laughs> okay. So, another trap. So I can just try to evade it. That's only 40% success, and then there's a 75% chance of success if I use one of these. Since I'm full health, I'm going to take the risk. And we evaded the trap. So there, I, I, one of the things that I hope that uh, in future development we might see is just, uh, you know, like maybe a little roll there or some sort of a um, more cinematic version of seeing what my luck held. Will of the Wisp. So I can attack the Will of the Wisp or follow. It might reveal treasure or trigger a trap. Here I don't know what the chances are, um, but, you know, let's get let's go for it the party loses five hp that that was not treasure so here i've reached the door but normally yeah so 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 uh, this time i need i'm not sure what this is but it's in essence a key so you'll have to search throughout the dungeon for the key i'm guessing one of them will be in this little cul-de-sac let's protect from blasphemy i gained some loot 15 bones so that's what i can use back in the hub and in that merchant that you just saw there. So no, there was nothing there. We're going to have to find those little undead jesters or whatever they were, or wherever they might be. All right, so finally, we're into some combat now. And so let's take a look at these. Enemies are really cool. Kind of gives you, a, I don't know, like a Dark Souls, Elden Ring sort of vibe. You have this kind of, I don't know if you call it a centaur. Uh, it's like an, a, a deer or an elk that has kind of grown mutated so that it's just a its head is a bunch of hooves um, and then you have these weeping women uh, the clamoris which are holding their own heads that's very dark souls like all right so now we get into the actual game mechanics and there's a few things that you have to kind of get familiarized with um, but uh, basically you have your characters over here so you can see the HP I've, I've been hurt a little bit by that trap and then I have these uh, abilities over here. So I can use these abilities um, and I, I can also build up on this bar here their special sort of resource and it's different depending on which character you're using. Uh, so I have to reach, uh, th uh, there's this another thing that I really like, which is every time that you enter an encounter there's like a mission, there's like an extra bonus. This time I have to reach 5 rage, which is exactly that that I was talking about there, the, the sort of resource for this character, Magni which almost sounds like Magnor, but not quite, right? <laughs> and so this guy, he's basically kind of your warrior and defender, but he can consume rage, of course, to uh, do some, some more powerful attacks and defenses. So we need to reach five with him in order to um, basically accomplish this goal. If you accomplish a certain amount of goals, then you're going to be able to actually get a bonus at the end of the dungeon. So if you only accomplish one, you get a smaller bonus. Uh, then, you know, two, you get a bigger bonus, and then uh, I think it's up to four. Um, last time it was up to four, maybe more this time. Uh, you get the biggest bonus. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, we'll just talk about the uh, economy, which is over here. The, these little pips here, you have two action points. <clears throat> so things can cost either two, one, or zero. Um, we'll use zero first. So I added a hex 
to my deck, right? But um, I have now summoned this, uh, it's called a Limode. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's kind of like a demon or something. Uh, so, so that hex is negative. It's basically a card that comes up and I have to either pay to get rid of it or, uh, you know, I just hope it doesn't come up. <laughs> but it has some kind of a negative effect for me. It's not beneficial. So here we go. We're going to use just the big old attack. And it doesn't seem like it's going to really matter um, who we attack. You, you do as in uh, Slay the Spire. You'll, you'll see basically who they're going to attack next. Or if they were going to buff, you'd see a little buff icon. Oh, this means I crit. So that's a good hit. That's a very good hit. And we have to gouge two cards. Yeesh, I didn't notice that. So gouging two cards means you're removing them from the deck. Which can be good or bad. Uh, so I've used up all of my uh, AP. And so I will end turn. I don't know if it's called AP, but uh, basically my action economy. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, play a few cards with this character, the main character, I think, uh, Andorra. She has this thing called Swift, which basically allows her to, to uh, continuously redraw cards. Um, so we'll just, again, drop that, press the attack. And uh, this one is a really good one. I like this one. Um, we're, let's take a look. Okay, it looks like I'm getting AoE'd. You can tell by the fact that it's just cycling through here. Um, I could defend others. I, I'm going to be selfish and defend myself. Not that that really matters. And then we're going to lightning strikes twice. This guy to get rid of him. So we take one less of the damages. I, now I haven't seen what blindness does. I want to. I want to find out what that does. Oh, actually, I'm going to discard these cards again. That's kind of like slay the spire. At the start of your turn, you just draw five cards. New hand. Okay, so now we're playing with our warrior, and the warrior can do um, basically, oh, this is me right-clicking here. I uh, can do phalanx, damage is reduced by 20%. I uh, can add armor, which is just basically like, uh, I think, like temporary HPs. Uh, then you have berserker that he can go, you know, it's got all sorts of stuff like smash, deal four extra damage if the target has armor. I don't think that these do. You can right click on them to see uh, if they have buffs and debuffs. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare myself for their attack. And I'm going to you know, just get the party started with uh, probably. Well, actually, this protector is pretty good. Protector is kind of like guard. Um, so if you're familiar with that, uh, it's just going to protect an ally from the next single target attack and reduce the damage taken by 50%. So let's do that. And now we are going to tank. And you can see the turn order up here is happening. The next one over is the next round. So when there's that space there, you can see how the round's gonna play out. Something interesting about that is um, the turn order doesn't remain consistent. So I'm not exactly sure if that's due to speed or some kind of randomization. But there you have it. it you have to actually look ahead and, and think, okay, this person's going to go twice in a row, sometimes, etc., etc. Okay, so we've got Repost. Repost is really cool, as you might expect. It's just uh, attacking once uh, you've been attacked. Uh, now we are hurt, so the stand your ground is not bad in this case. Uh, let's let's do this. Um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna be unselfish this time and give my uh, little priestess gal back here um, some armor and then I'm gonna bust out that repost. All right, so next I'm gonna have to tank again. And these these gals, they, they don't play around. They do some, some well, <laughs> everything is a line AOE in this game. But like I said, it's, it's kind of like Slay the Spire, only you have three uh, characters. And I'm not sure, but I imagine that maybe you might get different characters and you can bring different characters around. So we'll start with Willingness to Sacrifice, get another Hex in on the deck. Um, but we are building up our resources. So we've already completed, as you can see up here, Magni has already had more than five Hatred. Um, so now we're looking at Merciless Whip. That one's a good one. And now this one, you can see normally it deals seven damage and bleeding, that's a dot. Uh, you gain one thirst. That's your special. When you have this limoed uh, active, 
Then instead, it deals six damage to all enemies. So that's nice because, uh, well, I have two enemies to deal with. Consume the thirst every time I do it. So the limb mode goes away. Uh, and so here now I can just use the Merciless Whip to bring my uh, Limoed back. And so it's, it's kind of like shape-shifting, sort of. And this is an interesting mechanic. To you. Now we're looking at this. Amori Fatti. Create a random adaptive card and it will cost zero AP this turn. I like that. Let's see what that is. All right. So, oh, nice. So we get True Purpose, gain Crusade, and uh, four armor. Let's see, what does Crusade do? Basic and neutral cards deal two more damage and give two more armor. I like that. Let's do that. Costs nothing once we've already paid it. Uh, so now I'm going to do Back for More. I really like this one. It's a very good defensive ability. And we're really building up the hate over here. So he's, he's tanking, he's tanking. But we are taking some damage. So let's see, I gotta get rid of this, right? So lose two HP at the end of your turn if it's still in hand, that's that hex card. So basically I'm just having to consume one of my AP to get rid of it. Uh, I wanna see what that blindness does, let's see. Blind, next attack will deal 50% less damage. That's pretty good, not gonna lie. We'll do that, blind this gal. Terrifying screams. I'm gonna need some heals here in a sec. I really wish I hadn't uh, have already uh, used it up. So let's let's see. Um, well, back for more is good, and I think I'm just gonna heal up this time. Nah, oh, this is good. Wait, let's see. Do do any of them have a buff? No, they have these debuffs. That's good. So I am gonna heal up just to let's to stay safe. And again, I'm going to do the same with her. Since she's blind, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna stand my ground and I'm going to help her. And there we go. Strike true, my blades. Okay, so see, now I got to go twice in a row. That was just kind of the way that it worked out. So I have the repost, which I love. And uh, the, the swiftness, this is, this is just great. I get to just heal two, drop one, get another one. This is great, lightning strikes twice. So we're gonna try to take this gal out. Oh, nice. Cri <laughs> I love that face. Ah! <laughs> All right, lightning does strike twice. Okay, nicely done. We're down to one. Oh no, I've gotta get rid of persecuted here. Well, let's see what it does. Curse at the end of turn. Okay, so Curse is, I think, going to deal more damage to me, so I do want to get rid of that. And she is hurt, so I am going to go ahead and heal up. Try to stay in this fight a little bit longer. Okay, now let's see what we got. We've got uh, Phalanx, that's good. And a Smash. Oathbound Goliaths. Oh, that's two Phalanx, two Tenacity. What's that? On next turn, draw one extra card for each attack received. That's nice. And yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're going to do that. Actually, he's full on hatreded out. So let's do this. We're going to give one regeneration to all. And we're going to buff up with some armor. And then I'm going to go Oathbound Goliath on him. So that's that's good protection there. To save them. And we will. Okay, so t deal 10 damage to a single enemy. I like that. Let's do it. And then pity. So this this gal is, whew, she's a little debuffed now. She's taking damage 40% extra, perhaps. I don't know if that's stacked for, oh, it's stacked for two turns, I think. So let's do that. Uh, willingness to sacrifice. We'll gain one thirst to get my limo to back. And then we will mercilessly whip. Nah, let's 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 heal up because she is hurt. What? Scared to face. Okay, an now warrior? I got a bunch of beacons of hope, and a couple of vor vor uh, pull strikes. Um, hmm. Let's just go one and one. Let's go one and one. And who's she attacking next? Everyone. Yeah, that's the problem with these. Let's go ahead and buff up and swiftness. Oh, that's good. But uh, we're still vorpal. We gotta 
lay down the dips. Now, as you saw there, I kind of pushed her back. I'm not sure if that does anything or if it's just kind of uh, cosmetic, but uh, I did push her back. All right, what do we got here? Gain four armor and crusade. Let's do it. And then let's just start smashing. I mean, well, that's eight minus two. Let's just do a seven. So, so you see, press a, press the attack can be useful. Not a useless card at all. Uh, and I get to go again with another Oathbound Goliath. That's my legendary card. You can tell there by the uh, sort of edging. You can also tell in the deck builder. Dead. It's in its own category. Goddess of Thunder. So this will definitely finish him off. Uh, let's see if I can uh, instead heal up. Yeah, I can. Because I am hurt. So I'm going to drop that. And I'm going to do this. And then uh, this Goddess of Thunder is Overwhelm. Uh, reduce the cost by one for each swift. So you can do it for free if you swift enough, basically. Uh, I don't think I have any more swifts. Uh, this is cool, but I'm going to hold on to that. So I'm just going to do this to finish her off. And that's a fight. So you see, I have to do six of these achievements. You can see what they do down here. For two missions, you get this. Four, five, six. So definitely worth trying to do that. My loot is up here. Um, so again, you can, well, I, I haven't actually shown that yet, but you can actually make potions in this game. So you're getting reagents. And then we draft. So uh, we're looking at uh, what we can do here. Uh, let's let's give that to Andorra. We're, we just basically have to choose who gets what. Gain two armor and heal two. Let's give that to her. And yeah, that's good. All right, moving on now. Let's go down this. Okay, so I found a treasure chest, but you do have to find a key before you can open that treasure chest. And would you believe it? We got the key right next to the treasure chest. That is, I believe, rare because I've uh, played this before and that did not happen before. So I'm guessing there's a little bit of procedural uh, nature to these dungeons, not entirely sure. But let me just hop out here for a second because I do want to show the uh, sort of hub, the central hub, um, because it's very interesting the way it's laid out. It's sort of your headquarters and you have these little nodes that you can interact with, uh, sort of like a menu, uh, but it's nicely presented. Okay, so here we have it. Um, we can go up here. You've got quest instructions. You've got the Dark Forge. Um, that lets you kind of power up your characters with things that you earn inside of the runs. There's this sort of dark bone currency down there. Uh, and over here we have the merchant stall where you can buy components and consumables. And you've got the apothecary where you can combine multiple um, sort of uh, components, uh, reagents, in order to make potions of various effects. You've got the quarters, which are going to do story. And here you can go to dungeon selection. And in the middle, we have uh, the great altar where you can customize your deck. Your deck is here on the right and the cards that you can equip are here on the left. I haven't really gotten that many cards yet. I've just started. So I don't really have any uh, deck to make just yet. Um, but that's the way that it works. As you can see, um, just everything is very nicely presented. So if you like story, if you're a fan of something in the middle of like Fire Emblem and uh, I don't want to say Darkest Dungeon, it's more like giving me Iron Oath vibes. I don't know if you're familiar with that game. I also recommend that one um, to check it out. Uh, and of course, Slay the Spire like uh, kind of deck builder where you're just constantly drawing uh, more cards and you have a limited amount of resources and you're trying to put them together. Um, it's it's a really solid game for being a pre demo pre alpha over here uh definitely highly recommend it so give it a look if you can and if you're watching this uh when the video is recent then please go check out their kickstarter so you can support them and if you haven't supported us on kickstarter uh we're both ending about a, at the, right around at the same time so um consider supporting us both and comment like and subscribe and thank you very much